This extract is from a novel called Breathing Underwater by Sophie Hardcastle, and it does a lot of similar things to Fable Parrot's um, piece of writing. So we'll look at that, but we'll look at some other things to see how uh, we can develop the writing process further. So this comes from the start of the novel, and it's called I Wear the Ocean. So it's obviously a metaphor there, <clears throat> saying that the ocean is a, a, a part of of the, the character. And we, if we look at this opening sentence to the novel, I feel Ben's patience with her. So we have this really short, enigmatic sort of sentence, and it introduces... Is it introduces the protagonist um, as an observer of the world and um, also it allows the, the reader to be invited into the story um, with all those sort of questions about who's been and um, why, why is he losing his patience and um, we don't really have a a, uh, a place for, for Ben yet and so we, we, we want to um, learn more about his character and just look at that word wither it's um, a really great um, word because what it does is it it um, gives you this image of um, you know his patience it is slowly eroding so it's, it hasn't he it hasn't snapped instantly it's something that's been coming for some time and and so that's that's really interesting and we want to look at some of the um, the word levels, um, the use of um, particular words that the writer uses to, to develop some really interesting sort of ideas. Okay, so when we start looking, we've got all these words like wither, rusty hinges, we've got his cheeks flush pink, uh, there's a word frenzy down here, um, I cough and splutter. So there are a lot of um, descriptive words and what they do is they pack a lot of punch so it's not overdone <clears throat> but but it, it does um, show that the writer is carefully choosing particular words to carry um, you know meaning and develop a bit of impact so we look at this um, <clears throat> the, you know rattling the metal bar we've got this sound imagery going on he's unable to release it from its rusty hinges so just by putting in that rusty it builds all this um, information for us that, that it's old, it's outdoors, it's, it's really weathered, it's been around for a long time. And obviously this is what's making Ben's patience wither, you know, and rather than saying, and Ben lost his patience, you know, it's, it's saying his, his cheeks flush pink, which, you know, we can then read into that um, information. And I like this idea that Ben's her twin brother, so it, that tells us a lot about their connection to each other and, you know, builds a bit of interest in the story. So we've got all these sort of words moving around. And, and then the other thing that this page does is use it uses a lot of active verbs to create a real impact. And it, it does show the energy of the kids and of um, the events going on. So if we look, we've got kicks, flies, slams, um, there's a, you know another word, another kicks down there, we've got coughing, we've got darting down here somewhere, dart, then we dart around the house. So there are all these um, active verbs being used to, to create this sense of energy and movement and um, get the action going within the story. And, and so when we look at this sentence, the sudden bang wakes barbecue and honey soy from their sleep, sending them into a frenzy. So, you know, the, the door flies open and slams into the chicken coop. So you can, you can capture the sort of, you can really sense the, um, the chaos that's going on and the, you know, the, the, um, fret that the, uh, the chickens would have. And what a great, um, humor to call one of the chickens barbecue and the other one honey soy you know it's that's typical of the australian you know uh, sense of humor which is really good when we come down here we've got some um, imagery being used and you can really get a sense of what it's like in the um in the the, the chook pen so Honey soy kicks up a cloud of dust as I'm sifting through the store, the straw. So we've got all this 
tactile, you know, imagery of, um, you know, and obviously we can feel it and we can see, and we sort of, we can appreciate the, the, um, the, the dust and, and, and all the, the grit and the smells that are coming from the, the chicken coop. You know, grit makes my eyes dry. You know, you can really get that tactile sense of feeling going on there. There's a foul taste of chicken food. So, oh, you know, like, it's so overpowering the smell in there that you can almost taste it, you know. And um, so I, I think that's um, that's a real um, clever thing when you're establishing setting um, to be able to really p create a, a vivid picture using um, image imagery. And when we look down here, there's a really lovely image. Um, so we, we dart around the house to the outdoor shower, leaving emerald footprints in the morning dew. So that really um, captures this image of it being a, a crisp morning. There's a dew on the grass and their footprints are, are left on the on the grass there. And, and you know, it creates this real clear image of um, what the morning's like. Um, and then we get over here and we've got lots of interesting things going on. They're about to have the shower after they're surfing. And um, <clears throat> so the sentence from the page before says, like the first heavy droplets to fall from storm clouds, water rains from a large round shower head, freckled with orange and turquoise spots of corrosion. So there's, there's some really nice images in there, you know, using that simile um, really... Um, shows the enjoyment that they're getting from this fresh water to wash off all the salt, and you know, um, you know, it, obviously the shower head it is so large it gives a gentle stream of of water that um, tr that sort of trickles down, um, so you you get a real sense of that, and and then you've got all these um, colours being swirled into that as well, so the, there are lots of nice things going on there, and then I like this in this sentence. In this paragraph, but nailed to one of the slats is a shelf made of driftwood with a bar of coconut soap and a bottle of home brand shampoo. So um, that gives us a sense of what life is like and what the the characters or what the family's like. That they're not too pretentious and that that it is a really rustic sort of coastal existence that they're living in. They just bang a nail into the into the wall and um, <clears throat> they hang some soap over it. And uh, so that's a really nice way of allowing the reader to find out a little bit about the personality of the characters um, and do it in a way that is is very subtle. <clears throat> and then if you look at the types of things in here, we've got the the slat is a piece of driftwood and the, there's a bar of coconut soap. But there's a conch shell a sea sponge and a succulent in a silver teapot. So all of these things are things you would scavenge from around the area. And so that gives you a, a real sort of um, sense of, of what their life is like. It is very simple. You know, that succulent, they've obviously snapped off something and got an old teapot and, and um, that, that's, um, that's their way of creating something artistic out of, you know, recycle things. So it, it tells us a lot and it really does contribute to the setting and tells us that it's quite a calm environment and it's very down to earth and unpretentious. Um, okay, we, when we, and once again, we've got all this minutia, all those little details, but they all build up to, to, you know, through developing the setting, they create a real sense of, of the um, the life that the, the people live there and what their personalities are like, and then down here, oh, it's cold. It is cold, you know. So italics are used for emphasis, um, and and you know, there's a real strong personal voice developed here. And what I like when we get to here is that there is sort of like a shift in narration. So um, <clears throat> this is all in the moment. And then this really is, has a reflective tone. For a few years now, I've watched time carve beautiful figures, blah, blah, blah. And, and so it's more, um, it's like it's an older person or a more mature person um, 
con considering this when in the opening scene she's just a young kid running around with the brother brother causing chaos so it's interesting um how the the writer shifts that focus very subtly um to to reveal more information about the um the, the thought process and the personality of the the protagonist and that's a lovely piece of personification i've watched time carve beautiful figures out of prepubescent mar marble blocks so um you know it's it's a work of art again and i crave the curves there's little things bras and bikinis busts and you know so lots of alliteration going on there and um you know and, and i think that that really um complements the the um the down to earth sort of nature that's been developed in the environment you know dad's moving around he's picking up surfboards and telling them to turn the taps off over here and and so we're getting a bit of a sense of the um the warm um sort of <clears throat> very casual but nurturing environment that they're in um and you know you can t tell a lot about their family from their kitchen and we've got this sentence here that mummy's in the kitchen i slouch over the wooden bench worn and smooth by this family like a piece of driftwood worn and smooth by the sea so it's it's an ongoing uh, process it shows that they spend a lot of time together and the action um, between them gently or smoothly warm wars or wears the um the the uh wooden bench down so there are no splinters it's a very gentle process and it creates something that's really comfortable there's lots of color imagery in here your lips are blue she's shivering there's oranges and um, purples and turquoises up here and there are other colors on the other page so it's another nice um stylistic device that that the the writer's using to to develop that it's got a lot of well not a lot but it's got a good amount of dialogue in there that that um just reflects the the positive environment you know so rather than having a stand up fight about um being too long in the shower like most families have uh, ben holds creates a bit of a joke you know by drawing it out and dad doesn't get angry and so there's lots of these things going on it's it's autumn um so we could look at the time of year and say well summer autumn winter spring autumn's that time where things are starting to slow down and um <clears throat> moving out of the the um the warmth and the the strength of summer and he we're heading towards winter so it's getting physically cooler but but it is the 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 um the season and life is starting to to slow down a bit and that provides an opportunity for um you to reflect on on the situation so lots and lots of things going on in this this piece of writing too and we could continue talking about them but i think that um you know it's the observation where we're right in the the mindset of the character and you can see that here as i eat i listen to the two of them chat and it's as if mum and ben speak in, in another tongue it's a language i can almost understand but i know i'll never speak so it's a real nice metaphor there to talk about their connection and um, their sense of belonging too <laughs>